Okay, I make that uh, two thirty by my watch. So good afternoon, everyone, and a warm welcome to the webinar today entitled "The End of the Tax Year: Act Now." And this webinar is brought to you today by us here at AVC Wise, working in conjunction with your employer. And today I'm looking forward to showing you about how with some careful tax planning in combination with paying into the local government share cost ABC, it offers a fantastic way to help you mitigate some of your tax liability for this tax year. But as you can see on the screen there with that clock whirling away, time really is of the essence here with only just over two months of this tax year remaining. So as you can see on the screen there, my name is Nick Pottinger and I'm one of the retirement education specialists here at AVC Wise. And I've worked in financial services for over 20 years now. And for the last nine of those years, I've been working exclusively in the local government AVC sector, where I've helped thousands of people like yourselves understand what a great employee benefit the AVC arrangement is and how they can make the most of it to save extra money for retirement. Few bits and pieces to make you aware of before we begin today then. So the content of this webinar is provided for educational purposes only and does not constitute financial advice. The information given is based on our current understanding of taxation, legislation and regulations. Any levels and bases of and reliefs from taxation are subject to change. And any examples used in the presentation are based on the national insurance rates that came into effect from the 6th of November 2022 and figures are for illustrative purposes only and are calculated on a month by month basis and not cumulative. And estimates are also not guaranteed. And tax treatment is based on individual circumstances and may be subject to change in the future. And finally, fund values can fall as well as rise and past performance should not be used as a guide to future performance. OK, so what are we going to be taking a look at today then? Well, to give you a quick overview, I'm going to be showing you how you've still got time left to take action and mitigate some of your tax liability for this 2022-2023 tax year by either starting to contribute into a shared cost AVC arrangement or by increasing your existing shared cost AVC contributions. And to give you a bit more of a specific idea of what, we get, what we're going to be covering today, we're going to take a look at a reminder of the key benefits that the shared cost ABC arrangement provides. Some key facts around the tax year, including a bit of context as to how income tax and national insurance works in England and Wales. We'll also take a look at the key benefits for you paying into a shared cost ABC. And to bring it to life a little bit here, I'll be introducing you to some case studies with Joe and Jane to show the fantastic savings that can be made via the shared cost AVC. And then lastly, and most importantly, I'll be showing you how you can make it happen and next steps to take. Whether you're someone here today who's not currently contributing into a shared cost AVC, or indeed if you're someone who's already making existing shared cost AVC contributions, I'll show you the next steps to take to proceed. OK, so let's first of all, then just remind ourselves of the key benefits that the shared cost AVC arrangement provides. So with a local government shared cost AVC, you're building up an extra pot of money that sits alongside your main local government pension and potentially within limits, you can take that whole AVC pot of money you've built up all back as a tax free cash lump sum when you take your AVC arrangement at the same time as you take your main local government pension. And this is a huge deal for you as you're the only public sector scheme that allows you to take the whole AVC pot of money you've built up all back as tax free cash. And other public sector schemes such as the teachers pension scheme or NHS pension scheme, their AVC members do not have that option. But you being a member of the LGPS, you've got this fantastic opportunity to build up this extra pot of money within the AVC that you can potentially take all back as a tax free cash lump sum as long as you take your AVC at the same time as you take your main local government pension and as long as it's within certain limits. Share cost AVCs also have flexibility as well. So whilst you're saving into an AVC, you've got total freedom to increase or decrease your contributions as you choose be it wanting to perhaps pay in larger sums towards the end of the tax year to bring your total tax liability down, or just having the peace of mind in being able to adjust your contributions to accommodate those unexpected day-to-day -day expenses, such as your washing machine suddenly giving up the ghost or your car failing its MOT. Well, the AVC gives you that flexibility to make those changes to your contribution amounts. And when you get to the point in life that you want to access your AVC benefits in retirement, you've got an array of options available to you, 
you could just choose to simply take it all back as a tax free cash lump sum, as I've already mentioned, or you could use it to provide a guaranteed pension income in retirement, amongst other options. The choice is yours and you don't need to make a decision on how you want to utilise this extra pot of money you've built up within, within the ABC until you're ready to access it in retirement. So total flexibility there. You also receive tax relief on any money that you pay into the shared cost ABC arrangement on the basis the money you're paying into the ABC is due to be taxed by your employer. And as the ABC contribution is taken directly from your salary, any tax savings you're making are applied automatically. So no need to complete any confusing tax returns or self-assessment forms. It's all hassle free. And finally, then your employer allows you to have a local government ABC arrangement set up on a shared cost basis via a salary sacrifice arrangement. And what does this mean? Well, in simple terms, it means that you save on tax and national insurance on the money that you put in. And saving national insurance on ABC contributions is also something unique to the local government ABC arrangement too. So with a shared cost ABC arrangement, then you're benefiting from a double tax break by saving on income tax and national insurance each time you save into the ABC on the proviso the money you're contributing into it is due to have tax and national insurance taken by your employer. So just before we go any further today, then let's just take a, a, a closer look or examine how the shared cost ABC arrangement works whilst you're actually saving into the arrangement. So with the shared cost ABC, you can only make contributions into it directly from your salary. So it's important to take note that as we get to the end of this tax year, you can't just get the checkbook out and write a check for the amount you want to pay into the ABC to try and effectively backdate your contributions as any contributions you make into this shared cost ABC always have to come directly from your salary. And it's for that reason that today's webinar is so important for those of you here that do want to start making contributions or increase contributions into your ABC for this tax year, as you've only got two months left now. So effectively two pay slips in actual fact, uh, some payrolls may have even already cut off for the, uh, the, the February salary. So it's either one or two pay slips left now that you can effectively contribute into the ABC for uh, for the rest of this tax year. Now, any money you pay into this AVC arrangement goes into your AVC pot, which is an extra pot of money that sits alongside your main local government pension. And the objective really is to try and build up a pot of money as large as you can, uh, as large as you can afford before you retire. And you've got the flexibility to vary your contributions so you can increase or decrease as you choose with the maximum monthly contribution being up to around 60% of your salary uh, and sometimes potentially higher depending on what your actual salary is and the minimum contribution you can make into a shared cost ABC is just two pounds a month. Now the money you put into your shared cost ABC is then invested and your pension fund would have already chosen the company or companies responsible for investing your AVC contributions. Uh, and with everyone here today, your AVC provider will either be Prudential, Standard Life, Legal in General or Clerical Medical. And some employers do actually have a choice of two different AVC providers. You, and you, in those instances, you can choose which one to go with. But the vast majority just already have the one pre-selected. Uh, and if you were interested, if you go to our application on our website at avcwise.co.uk and you click on a new application there, you will see who your ABC provider or providers are. Now, the shared cost ABC is an investment based product. And as with any investment, you could get back less than what you've paid in as funds can go down as well as up. But all the funds are there with the intention of increasing your ABC pot of money on top of what you've already made or paid in yourself. And the good thing for you is you've got total control control over how the company invests your money. So whether your ABC provider is Prudential, Standard Life, Legal and General or Clerical Medical, you've got total control over how that company invests your money. You can take as much or as little risk as you want. And I'll show you later today how you can access that information. But it is also worth noting that any investment returns you see within the ABC are also free of tax too. And then at the end, You've got the flexibility to choose how you take your ABC benefits in retirement. So you could decide to convert your ABC pot of money into a variety of different pension products. But remember, as you're all members of the LGPS, you've got this unique option whereby you could just simply choose to take that whole ABC pot of money you've built up all back as a tax free cash lump sum. 
OK, so let's just take a look then at what it would actually cost you from your salary to pay an amount into the shared cost ABC by taking a look at a quick example here. So if you're a basic rate taxpayer, it means that you pay tax at 20 percent on a proportion of your earnings and national insurance at 12 percent on any earnings above twelve thousand five hundred and seventy pounds within the tax year. So if you're in a, someone in a similar position to that and you wanted to say save £100 a month into a shared cost AVC, it would actually only cost you £68 from your net pay, your take home pay to do it. And that actually amounts to a massive 47.05% uplift to your savings as soon as the money goes into the shared cost AVC. And if you're a higher rate, a 40% taxpayer, the savings are even greater still. So if you're a 40% taxpayer, assuming the £400 going into the shared cost AVC was due to be taxed at 40%, it would only cost you £58 from your take home pay. And that actually equates to a quite remarkable 72.41% uplift to your contributions as soon as the money goes into the AVC arrangement. Now, some of you here today might be currently saving money into a savings account or a cash ISA, or at the moment, you'll probably be lucky to be getting around two to three percent interest on your savings. With the shared cost AVC, you're going to be benefiting from that huge initial uplift of over 47 percent if you're a basic rate taxpayer or over 72 percent if you're a higher rate taxpayer. So this arrangement really does allow you to save money for retirement in the most tax efficient way possible. Now, I appreciate the AVC is a pension arrangement and therefore you can't access the money in a pension arrangement until you're at least over the minimum retirement age, which is currently age 55. But the comparison there is pretty stark when you're comparing the savings that you could be making within a shared cost AVC in comparison to other savings vehicles you've got access to in the marketplace. And this is what your employer set up for you. The ability to be able to save money from your salary, allowing you to save on tax and national insurance on your contributions, which is an absolutely fantastic benefit for you. OK, so remember then we are now approaching the end of this tax year and as a result, you've got this limited time left in the next couple of months to make a difference and either start paying into a shared cost AVC or by increasing your existing shared cost AVC contributions. As once we're out this tax year, any tax relief you're entitled to from this year is lost for good. So let's just take a quick look at some key facts for this tax year then. So this tax year running from the 6th of April 2022 to the 5th of April 2023. First thing to remember is that you are allowed to earn a certain amount of income within the tax year before you're due to start paying income tax. It's called the personal allowance and this tax year the standard personal allowance is £12,570. So you're typically allowed to earn £12,570 this tax year before you're due to start paying income tax. And anything above that amount, you'll start to pay income tax at the relevant amounts due. And it might be worth taking a look at your payslip because ultimately it's your tax code on your payslip that sets out the amount you're allowed to earn this tax year before you're due to start paying income tax. And if you see that your tax code on your payslip is 1257L, that means that you've got this standard personal allowance of £12,570 for this tax year. But if you take a look at your payslip and see anything different to that 1257L tax code, it could mean that your personal allowance is either more or less than that standard personal allowance amount. And there could be many reasons for that. It could be that you're currently in receipt of other income streams where either part or all of your personal allowance is being applied against that. Or it could be that you've perhaps underpaid tax for a previous tax year. And ultimately, there's a multitude of different reasons as to why your tax code might be different to the standard one. And if you take a look at your tax code and don't think something's quite right there, the best course of action is to get in touch with HMRC and query it with them. And remember, it's not just income tax that you're due to pay from your salary, as you'll also typically be paying national insurance contributions too. And since July last year, July 2022, uh, the amount you're allowed to earn before you start paying national insurance has been equalised with the personal allowance. So any income that you earn above £12,570, you'll be paying national insurance on of 12% until your annual income reaches £50,268, uh, where anything above that amount uh, would have national insurance contributions of 2%.
So if your income is above £50,268, you'd be paying a mixture of 12% and 2% uh, national insurance. And it is also worth pointing out, as some of you may already be aware, that the personal allowance of £12,570 has now been frozen until 2027. So with that personal allowance being frozen, every pay increase you receive between now and then will mean you will be paying more tax than ever before. And you will never be likely to start to drift into those higher rate tax ban brackets where you start to pay a higher percentage of tax on your earnings. And with the recent pay award, the majority of you should have received at the end of last year, you may now find that you're paying more tax than you expect to this tax year. And this is where this shared cost ABC arrangement really does come into its element and provide a fantastic opportunity to claw some of that tax back. And as a result, give yourself more money to enjoy spending in your retirement. Now, as I've already mentioned several times through the webinar today, you've now only got this limited amount of time to relieve yourself of any tax you're due to pay this tax year, as you can only make shared cost ABC contributions directly from your salary. So now we've effectively at most got your February and March salaries left in this tax year that some deductions can come from. And that's why it's vital for you to take on board that making contributions from your remaining one or two pay slips is the only opportunity you've now got to make those vast savings I showed you a moment or so back for this tax year by paying into the shared cost AVC. So the key message really is act now because once we're out this tax year, you do lose that opportunity to, to claim back any tax relief uh, for this tax year. So let's just take a look at the relevant amounts of tax that you're due to pay, which of course depends on your income. Now, sometimes there is a bit of a misconception that as soon as your income goes into the higher rate tax bracket, you start paying higher rate tax on all of your earnings. But that is absolutely not the case. So as I just mentioned, the standard personal allowance, the amount you're allowed to earn in a tax year before you're due to start paying income tax, has been frozen at £12,570 until 2027. So if your yearly income is below £12,570, you shouldn't be paying any income tax at all at the moment. So income tax, it does work on an increasing sliding scale basis. So any earnings between £12,570 to £50,270, you'd be paying 20% tax on, that's uh, basic rate tax. And then any earnings between £50,270 to £150,000, you'd be paying 40% tax on that proportion, higher rate tax. And then if you're lucky enough to earn over £150,000 a year, that's where that segment of income would come into the additional top rate tax bracket of 45%. And it is also worth mentioning that for any income that you earn above £100,000, your personal allowance would actually be reduced at a rate of £1 for every £2 of income in excess of £100,000. And that would actually result in the standard personal allowance of £12,570 being completely wiped out by the time your income reaches £125,140. Now, I don't expect that's an issue that most of us will need to consider here today, but I have included it for compliance purposes at the bottom of the screen, just in case. But as you can see there, whatever tax band or tax bands you find yourself in, you are handing over a fair chunk of your money to HMRC before your salary ends up in your bank account each month. And by paying into a pension arrangement like the shared cost ABC, you get to keep more of the money that you've worked hard for and where paying into pensions helps mitigate your tax liability by getting tax relief on your pension contributions. And of course, the contributions you already make into your main local government pension scheme does qualify for that tax relief too, as any UK based pension arrangement would. But with the local government shared cost ABC, you're not only getting income tax relief, but in addition to that, you're also getting national insurance savings too. So ask yourself then, why wouldn't you want to make use of this arrangement and make some big tax savings this tax year before it's too late? Well, if you're someone here today that's not currently contributing into the shared cost ABC and looking to get it set up, or if you're someone who's already contributing into the shared cost ABC arrangement and looking to perhaps increase your existing ABC contributions, the shared cost ABC really does allow you to make those vast savings uh, I mentioned earlier, whereas a basic rate taxpayer, you're benefiting from an effective uplift of 47.05% as the money goes into the arrangement, or as a higher rate taxpayer, a 72.41% uplift. 
And remember, with you all being members of the LGPS, you get to potentially take that whole pot of money you've built up within your AVC all back as a tax free cash lump sum at the point of retirement. So it really is a fantastic deal. OK, so just to bring this to, to life for you a little bit here, I just want to show you what kind of a saving you could make by supercharging your ABC contributions for these final couple of months of the tax year. So first of all, let me introduce you to a colleague of yours called Joe. So this is Joe and he's on a salary of £30,000 a year, so he's a 20% basic rate taxpayer. And Joe has been paying into the shared cost ABC throughout the whole of this tax year so far with a steady contribution of £250 a month. And as Joe's been making income tax and national insurance savings on his contribution, that £250 a month has only been costing him £170 from his take home pay. So a nice £80 saving for Joe there. However, the more you contribute into this shared cost ABC arrangement, the more income tax and national insurance you save on. And as the end of the tax year approaches, Joe decides he really wants to make the most of the shared cost ABC arrangement and supercharges ABC contributions for the remaining two months of the tax year. So Joe increases his contribution from £250 a month to a rather hefty uh, £1,000 a month just from his February and March salaries. Now, that £1,000 contribution actually only costs him £680 from his take home pay. A massive saving there that actually means Joe has saved a very considerable uh, £640 in income tax and national insurance contributions in just those final two months of the tax year. And yes, that is quite a high amount that Joe's increased to for those final couple of months. And it might be that he can't afford to, to see that kind of reduction in his take home pay. But if Joe's if Joe's got savings, perhaps in a savings account or a cash ISA that isn't doing much for him at the moment, and the value of those savings are actually, when you think about it, probably being eroded due to the pace and rate of current inflation, he could live off some of those savings instead, uh, whilst paying a greater proportion of his salary into the ABC, as it would typically be the smart move to make in those types of instances. And now let's just take another look at another case study here with another of your colleagues called Jane, who happens to be a 40% higher rate taxpayer. So this is Jane and she's currently on a salary of £70,000 per annum. And just like Jo, she's been paying into the shared cost AVC for the first 10 months of this tax year at £250 a month at a cost to her of just £145 a month due to the 40% tax savings and 2% national insurance savings she's getting. And just like Jo did, Jane decides to supercharge her shared cost ABC contributions for the final two months of the tax year and increase her contributions to £1,000 a month. And as Jane's a higher rate taxpayer, it costs her even less from her take home pay to pay that £1,000 into her ABC, uh, just £580 from her take home pay to contribute £1,000 into the shared cost ABC. And in just those two months, Jane makes a huge £840 saving in income tax and national insurance. So that's £840 of her salary that she now gets to keep instead of handing it across to HMRC. And to boot, Jane knows that she can take it all back as a tax free cash lump sum at the point of retirement. Now, the two case studies we've just had taken a look at there are showing the savings that can be made in these final two months and are based on their respective salaries of £30,000 for Joe and £70,000 for Jane. And the savings that you can make, depending on what your salary is, may differ. But you can see there the incredible savings that can be made just by increasing or starting to pay into a shared cost ABC in these final uh, couple of months of the tax year. And if you would like to find out what a contribution would cost you from your take home pay, we do have a very useful calculator on our website at avcwise.co.uk where you can enter your salary amount in and your tax code and it will estimate the cost to you from your take home pay to make a contribution of your chosen amount into the shared cost AVC. OK, and just to, to finish up on today then just want to show you another fantastic potential benefit that the shared cost AVC provides. So for those of you here today that are currently claiming child benefit, you might not be aware that if your salary goes above a certain amount, it will start to have an impact on the amount of child benefit you're eligible to receive. So coming back to Jane here, then she happens to be a mum with two children 
and is claiming uh, £1,885 tax-free in the form of child benefit. However, due to Jane earning over £50,000 of adjusted net income this tax year, she needs to pay the high income child benefit charge. And just to let you know, that high income child benefit charge actually wipes out any child benefit entitlement you're claiming if your adjusted net income is above £60,000 within the tax year. And with Jane here, that's exactly what happens. And she has to pay all the child benefits she's received over the course of the tax year back to the government due to that high income child benefit charge. Now, this is where the shared cost ABC does have an additional string to its bow and can help you save even more money. So with Jane here, as long as she pays a sufficient amount into the shared cost ABC within the tax year, she can reduce her adjusted net income to below £50,000 and get to keep the full amount of child benefit she's receiving. And for those of you wondering, adjusted net income is basically your annual salary or earnings minus any pension contributions you're paying. So with Jane here, with her salary being £70,000, she needs to make sure she's paying £20,000 into her pensions this tax year for a combination of her main local government pension contributions and the shared cost ABC. And as long as she does this, she gets to keep that full child benefit entitlement for her two children of £1,885 for this tax year and not incur that high income child benefit charge. And remember, with Jane here, she's a higher rate taxpayer. So not only is she getting that 40% income tax saving along with the national insurance savings when she contributes into the shared cost ABC, equating to that massive 72.41% uplift on her contributions, but she's now also making this huge other saving by not incurring the high income child benefit charge by making sure that her adjusted net income comes in below at £50,000 for this tax year, also working on the assumption that her partner's adjusted income is also below £50,000 too. So if you're someone here today currently claiming child benefit and have a salary that takes you above the £50,000 adjusted net income threshold, this is yet another fantastic plus point with the shared cost ABC that helps you save even more money. Just make sure that you've done some careful tax planning to mitigate that high income child benefit charge before the end of this tax year. But as we've seen today, no matter what your personal circumstances are, there are tremendous savings to be made across the board with just those incredible tax and national insurance savings alone. OK, so importantly, then, how do you apply or what are your next steps in relation to this uh, shared cost ABC arrangement? So for those of you here today that aren't currently paying into a shared cost ABC, you will need to complete a new application. And the first step is to go to our website avcwise.co.uk and then log into your account and on the home page scroll to the bottom of the page and you'll see the application buttons just click on the new application button and complete your details and when you're completing your details on the application form the uh, the form will ask you to select the fund or funds that you wish to invest in within your abc and within the application form itself, you will find a link to the fund guide for Prudential or Standard Life, Legal and General or Clerical Medical, whoever your ABC provider is. And if you click on that download fund guide link, you will then be able to see all the different funds you're able to invest in. And by the way, you can select uh, one fund or multiple funds to invest in and you're not tied into the initial investment choice you make on your application as you can always change your investment choices at any time. So if you're someone here today who really wants to get this shared cost ABC arrangement set up in time for this tax year, but aren't quite sure about what investment choice to make, there would be nothing to stop you from, say, going with a, a minimal risk fund to begin with, like a cash fund, because you've always got the opportunity to do something different with your investment choices uh, further down the line. Now, once you submit your application, that will then make its way to your employer for them to do their checks on. And on the basis that it's accepted by your employer, your AVC arrangement will then be set up with your AVC fund provider, whether that's Prudential, Legal and General, Standard Life or Clerical Medical. And then your contributions will then start to be taken uh, from the next available pay, which is typically the following month. So as I say, some payrolls have already cut off for February, uh, but otherwise, you know, it's in terms of this tax year, you've either got your February and your March salaries left or just your March salary at this point. If you do an application in the next few days, it's certainly going to make that March salary, may even make the February salary. 
Now, if you're someone here today that's already paying into a shared cost AVC with us here at AVC Wise and are perhaps looking to supercharge your AVC contributions for these final couple of months of the tax year, like we saw with our two case studies today, it is a similar process. Again, just go to our website, avcwise.co.uk and log into your account. Head to the My Shared Cost ABC page and click on Amend Contribution Amount and simply enter the new desired monthly amount you want to pay into the ABC as a total. And then your amended ABC contributions will then start to be taken from your next available payroll. So I would say act as soon as possible to get your amendment request in to ensure that you make or at least try and make the February salary. As I say, some payrolls cut off on the first, others are a bit later. Uh, and then if you're purely looking for, say, paying in an increased amount for perhaps your February and March salary or just your or just your March salary. You can always then log into your ABC Wise account again from, say, mid-March onwards just to readjust your contribution amount down to the amount that you're looking to pay in uh, from your April salary. Now, we appreciate that some of you may need some extra help when it comes to either amending your existing shared cost ABC contributions or setting up uh, a new shared cost ABC arrangement. So you do have the opportunity of booking a one to one meeting with us, and that might be with myself or one of my fellow retirement education specialists here at AVC Wise. And this meeting is completely free of charge. The meeting lasts up to around 20 minutes or so, and it takes place on Microsoft Teams. And it's where we can give you a helping hand to either set up your shared cost AVC or help you with increasing your existing AVC contribution amounts. And we can look at things such as working out the maximum amount you're allowed to hold in an AVC and take all back as tax free cash or looking at what you can pay in to maximise your tax and national insurance efficient contribution. We can also look at government limits as well, you know, in terms of what you're allowed to pay into pensions within a tax year. Uh, you've got the annual allowance, the standard annual allowance is £40,000 for this tax year. Uh, it can sometimes be less than that, depending if, on whether you've accessed pensions previously. But we can look at information like that and really just making sure that you're making the most of the unique opportunity the Shared Cost ABC presents and how you can benefit uh, from the arrangement overall or just in these final couple of months of the tax year. Now, I will stress this option of a meeting is really, really only available if you're ready now at this moment in time to either set up a shared cost ABC or amending or looking to amend your existing ABC contributions at this point. I'd say if you're not in a position to do that, just hold off booking a meeting with us for the time being. Uh, as you can imagine, we are quite busy here at ABC Wise at this point in the tax year, and we want to make sure that we are seeing people that do need to take action within these final couple of months of the tax year uh, as the tax year approaches. So there's nothing to stop you booking a meeting with us further down the line when you are in a position to apply or amend your contributions then. So if you are ready to apply now or looking to amend your existing contributions now, would like that helping hand before you do that, just go to www.avcwise.co.uk forward slash meeting and you can book in a meeting with us at a convenient time and a date for you. And that website link will be coming up in a second as well if you haven't had time to jot that down. Now, some considerations here for us to be able to help you at this meeting. Please do ensure that you've got access to an LGPS projection to your desired retirement age. Uh, if your annual benefit statement has a projection for an age later than your intended retirement age, you can always log into your LGPS main scheme self service portal to get a projection to your desired retirement age there. Also, if you've already got an AVC arrangement already in place, try and get an up to date valuation on what your AVC pod is currently worth. We'll also need you to have access to an up to date pay slip. And please also do consider what you can afford to see less in your take home pay each month, too. And as you can see there, the bottom left hand corner of the screen, we're not providing any financial advice or investment advice at this meeting, but we can give you factual information and help you on your way to either applying for the shared cost AVC or on your way to apply, uh, amending your existing shared cost AVC contribution amounts. So just to reiterate, if you are ready to apply now or amend your contributions now and would like that meeting with us, just go to www.avcwise.co.uk forward slash meeting and we'll get that set up for you. And just before we stop for questions, then I just want to go through some useful pointers here. So as I've literally just mentioned there, uh, if you're someone here today looking to act now before the end of the tax year and get an ABC set up or amend your existing ABC contribution amounts and would like a meeting with us before you do that, just uh, head to that uh, website at the top, uh, at the, at the top there, www.avcwise.co.uk forward slash meeting uh, and book yourself a meeting uh, with us. Got a live chat facility on our website where you can get a quick answer to any questions you might have there. 
or if you prefer the more traditional uh, contact method, you can give us a call on that telephone number. Uh, we're typically open between 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. weekdays. Uh, and if you're looking for more details about how your main local government pension scheme works, you've got that website uh, kind of in the middle of the screen there, lgpsmember.org. Uh, that is a generic website, but it does give you a bit of detail about how your main local government pension scheme operates. And if you're on social media, you can uh, give us a follow here at ABC Wise on Twitter or Facebook at the respective addresses at the bottom of the screen there. OK, right. Well, let's see if we've uh, had any questions. OK, right. So Martin has asked, how do we know what is in our pot? So if you're talking about the AVC there, Martin, um, so your AVC is either going to be with Prudential, Standard Life, Legal and General or Clerical Medical, whoever your AVC provider is, they're the ones that hold your AVC pot of money. All right. And they would have those details in terms of what's in your AVC pot at the moment. Now, most of those providers operate an online system, uh, so you, you could in theory log into their system and see what your uh, uh, value is on a daily basis. Otherwise, you can give them a call. But otherwise, in terms of the amount, yes, on our website, abcwise.co.uk, all you're going to see on our website when you log into your account is the amount that you're scheduled to pay into your ABC monthly from your salary because we don't hold any money here at ABC Wise. We're simply helping your employer send the money across to your ABC fund provider. So it'd be a case of getting directly in contact with your uh, ABC provider, be that Prudential, Legal and General, Standard Life or Clerical Medical. Um, we've got a question here from Andy. Can you start at higher risk investments and then reduce to lower risk as you get nearer to retirement age? How do you do that? And uh, can you review your investment levels of risk? Absolutely, Andy. So, you know, what you've talked about there is effectively de-risking your investment profile as you get closer to looking to access your ABC at the point of retirement. And indeed, there are actually sometimes options that you can select that would automatically do that for you. They're typically called lifestyling options where they would start off by investing into, say, a kind of medium risk or a medium to high risk fund. And once you get to a certain number of years before retirement, they gradually start to move money from kind of minimal uh, kind of into lower to medium and minimal risk funds. So you've got lifestyle options that kind of automatically do that for you. Otherwise, there's nothing to stop you from doing that yourself, where you could say, well, I've got this amount, X amount in this higher risk fund or medium to high risk fund. And I want to move some of that money or all that money into uh, lower to medium or minimal risk. And again, doing that would be a case of getting directly in contact with your AVC provider. So whether that's Prudential, Standard Life, Legal and General, Clerical Medical, um, it'd be a case of contacting them. You might again be able to log into your account on their uh, in-house systems where you should be able to make those fund choices on there uh, and move money from fund to fund there. But that's it's any, anything in terms of moving money from fund to fund or changing your fund choices is always done directly uh, with your AVC provider. Uh, question here, is there any costs taken out? OK, yeah, good question. So in terms of the AVC, the only charge you've got in respect of it is in relation to the fund or funds that you invest in. All right. So. In terms of those funds, they do they do vary. The annual costs and charges do vary from fund to fund, but uh, typically you're kind of looking at between kind of one to two percent as an annual cost and charge. And of course, the intention is that the funds are there to hopefully perform uh, positively to the point where the, the fund has performed greater than the annual cost and charge. So, for example, if the fund performed at 5% in terms of growth and the annual cost and charge was 1%, your fund, uh, your AVC pot of money would have grown by 4% due to that, uh, uh, that, that particular scenario there. Now, there's no guarantee of that happening, of course, because funds can perform negatively and could have performance worse than the annual cost and charge. But that's the only uh, uh, set of charges you've got in relation to the AVC. It's the annual cost and charges in relation to the fund or funds that you invest in within the AVC itself. Uh, question here from Martin. If the ABC contribution amount paid takes you down to a lower tax ban, does the benefit drop? Well, yes, I mean, ultimately, the money you're paying into the ABC is going to get tax uh, relief at whatever your marginal rate is. So if you, if you find yourself in the kind of 40 percent tax bracket and 20 percent tax bracket and around 100 pounds of your income per month is due to be taxed at 40 percent, well, you could pay 100 pounds into an ABC and get 40 percent tax relief on it. Or you could, for example, pay 200 pounds into an ABC where 100 pounds of that contribution is going to get 40 percent relief. The other 100 pounds is going to get 20 percent relief. It all depends on where you sit in terms 
terms of that uh, uh, tax ban scale. But ultimately, a lot of people that are in the 40% bracket may look to bring themselves out of that 40% tax bracket by, say, paying enough into an AVC over the course of a tax year that reduces their tax liability. So they're just paying 20% tax. Uh, or, you know, some people might be looking to bring themselves out the 20% bracket if it's at all possible, because there is always upper limits in terms of what you're allowed to pay in. But uh, yes, you always get tax relief, whatever your marginal rate is. Uh, and remember, when you go into 40% tax, you start paying reduced national insurance contributions, right? So you typically uh, kind of go into the 2% national insurance bracket. So just because you're dropping into that 20% bracket, you're, you're going to get 20% tax saving, but a 12% national insurance saving, whereas when you're in that 40% bracket, generally speaking, again, a 40% tax saving and a 2% national insurance saving. Um, a question here, so is this is completely separate from our existing pension? Yes, OK, so the AVC, the local government AVC, which is what we've talked about today, is a part of your local government pension scheme, but it ultimately it is a separate pot of money. All right, so you've got your main local government pension, the one you're paying into at the moment, that's fine, no, no, no issues with that at all. But the AVC is an additional pot of money that sits alongside your main local government pension that you can decide to pay into. Uh, and as I said, you know, uh, today we've covered the fact that the main benefits you've got with the AVC is as the money goes into the arrangement, you're making those substantial tax and national insurance savings as the money goes into the plan over 47 percent uplift effectively. If you're a 20 uh, percent basic rate taxpayer, even more if you're a 40 percent taxpayer and then of course, with the shared cost AVC, the other unique feature you've got with it is if you take your AVC pot of money at the same time as you take your main local government pension, that's when, in theory, as long as it's within up a certain limit, you can take the whole AVC pot of money you've built uh, up all back as a tax free cash lump sum. So, yes, the AVC pot is an extra pot of money that sits alongside your main local government pension. You'll still be paying exactly the same amount into your main local government pension whilst you're paying into a, uh, an AVC. And a question here is, sorry, you might have said, which investment option should I choose? OK, well, I mean, I can't tell you, unfortunately, what investment choice to make, because ultimately that would be constituting financial advice, which I'm unable to give. But as I mentioned earlier, you know, in terms of the funds, you've got these funds that are usually typically divided into different risk categories and you've kind of got minimal risk uh, above that, lower to medium risk, then medium risk, then medium to high risk, and then finally a higher risk category. The further up that risk scale you go, the more potential there is to see greater growth. But of course, there is more potential to see greater loss too. Um, you can select one fund uh, from the available funds or usually up to a maximum of 10 different funds at any one time. You're not tied into your initial investment choice. You can always change your fund choices at any time as well. Also, some pension funds offer what's called a default investment option. It's not to be taken as a recommendation either on behalf of the trustees of your main local government pension or from your ABC provider. But ultimately, the default option is where your local government pension fund are telling Prudential, Standard Life, Legal and General, Clerical Medical to place money in an ABC when somebody doesn't come to decision themselves. Now, not every local government pension fund offers a default option, but uh, I would say at least kind of 60 percent of them do. If you wanted to find out if you've got a default option, again, it'd be a case of going to our application form on our website and downloading the fund guide, because in that fund guide, it should tell you whether you've got a default option available or not. And as I mentioned earlier on, you know, in terms of these fund choices, you, you know, a lot of people think, well, I'm always going to be investing into stocks and shares if I'm going into pension funds. Not the case at all, because you co you've got the option of going into, say, minimal risk funds like the cash fund. And as the name suggests, the cash fund is not investing into any kind of stocks and shares. It's just investing into cash type assets. And, you know, if you were to look at the past performance of a cash fund over the last 10 years, we would always say past performance is not to be taken as a guide to future performance in any case. But, you know, a cash fund over the last 10 years has either performed at just above zero percent or just very slightly below zero percent. So, you know, typically, you know, people would perhaps use that cash fund as a holding fund if they're not quite sure about what fund to go into at a later point or if they're fairly close to retirement because ultimately you know you're making those huge savings as the money goes into the ABC plan off the back of your tax and your national insurance savings so some people aren't particularly fussed about any real further growth they're adding to the ABC plan via the fund performance so you've always got that option of choosing whatever fund or funds you want to go in and what your attitude to risk uh, aligns to. And we've got a question here from Martin. So made up figure, if salary was £53,000, is it beneficial to pay £4,000 into an AVC? 
Well, we'd always say it's benefit no matter what your salary is, as long as you're, you know, the money you're paying into it is getting tax and national insurance. We'd always say it's very beneficial for you to pay money into an ABC. Now, I think what you're probably alluding to there, Martin, is, you know, if your salary was 53,000, uh, you know, are you going to get 40 percent tax if you paid uh, tax relief if you paid 4,000 in? Well, although you'd be in the 40 percent tax bracket with 53,000 as, as an annual salary, um, remember, you'd already be relieving yourself of some of your 40 percent tax um by paying into your main local government pension all right so actually you typically find it's only when your salary kind of gets to around fifty-five thousand in local government that you start to pay 40 percent tax because any 40 percent tax you were due to pay from between kind of 50 to 54 55 thousand would have already been mitigated by the contributions you're paying into your main local government pension but just to reiterate you know whatever your salary is as long as you're due to pay tax and national insurance on the money you're paying into the abc that's where you're going to be benefiting from those remarkable uplifts that we talked about earlier you know 40 over 47 percent if you're a basic rate taxpayer uh, and over 72 percent if you're a 40 percent taxpayer on the assumption that the money you're paying in is all getting 40 percent relief uh, as a higher rate taxpayer um okay let's see if we've got any uh, other questions here bear with me a moment OK, I think that is uh, all the questions we had today. So thank you, everyone. Some really excellent questions. And hopefully uh, I've answered those questions for you. But if not, don't hesitate to get in touch with us uh, with the details uh, in terms of the, the, the contact methods you can see on the screen there. OK, so today then I hope it's been a timely reminder about the fantastic benefits the shared cost ABC provides. It's an arrangement that's exclusively available to you with you all being members of the LGPS and it allows you to save additional money for retirement in a remarkably tax efficient way. And we've seen today the vast income tax and national insurance savings that you can make as the money goes into the arrangement. And then potentially you get to take that all back tax free at the point of retirement when you take your ABC pot of money at the same time as you take your main local government pension. And as the end of the tax year is now rapidly approaching, you've all now got a fantastic but time limited opportunity to either start contributing into the shared cost ABC arrangement or by supercharging your existing shared cost ABC contributions over the next one or two months to make the most of the tax savings available now for this tax year before this tax year comes to an end. And everyone here today, you all took that first step in making a difference to your retirement and your tax position by coming along to the webinar today and learning about the fantastic savings that can be made in time for this tax year. Now make sure you take that vital second step by either completing a new shared cost ABC application or by increasing your existing shared cost ABC contribution now whilst there's still time left in these final one or two months. So many thanks for your time today, everyone. I hope you found today useful. Um, I'll let you get off now and have a great rest of the afternoon.